Hello and welcome to Victoria Planet. Today we're going to be looking at metering again, but this time duplex metering. It's a form of incident metering. I want to apologise for the filming today outside because um, as I shot the film the sun was moving and a leaf seemed to have got in the way of the camera that I was filming with. So um, there's a lot of kind of flare going on and off, especially towards the beginning of the film. But apart from that, let's get to it, let's get outside, and let's see how to duplex meter. So a duplex meter reading is two incident light meter readings, and we average the two. Now in this situation, I have backlighting, and this is where duplex meter readings really come into their own. I'm taking a photograph of this rose, a still life, and I have the sun coming from behind the rose, lighting up the petals for me nicely, but I have shadow from the camera angle, which is on this side. So I need to take a meter reading of both the light coming from the camera side, as well as the light coming from the sun. And then I average the two readings. Now, important to know is that if you have an Invercone and you can flatten it, or you have a flat plate that you can put on, a flat Invercone, that's how you do these duplex light meter readings. By flattening the cone, I've now got a very directional light meter. Uh, it's often used for uh, measuring the light, uh, hitting a painting that you might be photographing, for instance. But in this case, I want very directional light meter readings, the light coming from the camera side and the light coming from the sun side. Let's take our meter readings now. So from rows to camera is the first one I take, and it's an eighth at f11. And now I'll take a meter reading of the sun that's hitting the rows, and that's 2 50th at f8. And then I take, make an average of those two, and it's a 60th at f8. So with that set on my camera, I can now take my photograph. Duplex metering. It's important, especially when the sun is behind your subject, to get some kind of average of how you're going to shoot that shot. If I hadn't taken the metering that I did, and I just relied on an incident light meter reading from the rows to the camera, I would have overexposed the picture. So I needed to know how much light was falling on the rows from behind, from the light source, so that I could get an average of those two. And as you see, the shot turned out really nicely. Next week, we're going to be looking at spot metering. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you then.